Body Mechanics The number two reason therapists leave the profession is repetitive strain injuries. RSI results from an accumulation of microtraumas related to inefficient biomechanics, poor posture, incorrect work habits, or constant motion. Proper body mechanics is the efficient use of postural techniques to deliver effective massage treatments while causing the least amount of strain to your body. Table Height Generally, you want the table at the height that makes it easy to apply as much force as you wish, with the least amount of effort. A good guide is to set your table so it reaches your mid-thigh or the tips of your straight fingers. Book patients further apart to adjust table height based on the size of the patient. If you fail to adjust the table for a client who is much bigger or smaller, you'll conduct the whole treatment in an uncomfortable position, spending more energy and placing unnecessary strain on your body. Practical Tip in orthopedic massage, it is better to have the table slightly lower. Front stance is used when you need a motion along the client's body. Place your feet just wider than hip width apart. Your torso is pointed at a 45 degree angle to the table. Power should come from two basic sources. Your body weight to be directed from above the client at an oblique angle. Your feet and the legs should provide the force from the ground. To make a stroke, you are bending your front knee and pushing with the back leg. Once the stroke has ended, bend your back knee. Push off with your front leg while returning your hands along the client. If your stroke is too long, step forward with your front leg while you continue the stroke. For some techniques, you work facing the table when little or no movement along the client is necessary. In this case, choose your posture that is comfortable for you. In school, they teach you to use the warrior stance. This posture may tax your body and drain a lot of energy. Try to place your feet apart and slightly lean on the table. If you need a lower position, widen your feet. Sitting Using handheld tools allows you to spend a lot of time in a sitting position, which saves you a lot of energy and makes it easy for your legs. I recommend a 32 inches tall pneumatic saddle stool. Sitting on a high stool helps you effectively use your body weight to create pressure. Also, this stool will keep your back in a natural healthy posture and helps with proper body mechanics and injury prevention. In fact, low sitting posture makes you raise your shoulders, putting unnecessary strain on your upper back muscles. Also, you have to apply horizontally oriented force using your muscles instead of body weight, which greatly increases the load on your hands, arms, shoulders, and neck. The most common mistakes. When performing massage, keep your lumbar spine straight and your shoulders relaxed. The back should never be bent or hunched forward. Choose proper distance from your client to minimize strain on your wrists, being mindful of the wrinkles in your wrists. The therapist's neck should be aligned with the rest of the spine. Some therapists have the habit of flexing their neck and looking down at their hands while massaging. Flexing your neck puts unnecessary strains on the upper back muscles, resulting in upper back and neck pain. The shoulders are another common area for injury among therapists. Many therapists raise their shoulders and elbows. Working with the shoulders or elbows elevated and tensed drains more energy, results in fast muscle fatigue, causes more postural strain, and finally, results in shoulder or neck pain. You should find the position where your shoulders are truly relaxed. Usually, you need a lower table height. The arms should never extend more than 45 degrees from the body. Again, you need to adjust the height of your table and stool properly. If you need to extend your arms for cross-body work, then move around the table and work from the same side instead. To avoid repetitive strain injuries of the shoulder, make the movement come completely from the core and legs. The wrists should remain in as neutral a position as possible. There will be a slight extension of the wrists in many massage techniques, but they never need to be flexed. A lateral or medial deviation should be avoided. Working with the wrists in either hyperextension or hyperflexion can contribute to tendonitis of the wrist. Thumb pain is the number one work-related injury among manual therapists. Don't use thumbs for any work. 100% of the deep work that is usually performed by the thumbs can be accomplished by handheld tools. Practice with these tools and they will feel as comfortable and effective as your thumbs and fingers. Summary to reduce repetitive motion injuries. Using proper body mechanics. Avoiding too much sustained pressure. Using hand tools. Adjusting the massage table and stool to an appropriate height. Scheduling periods of rest between clients. Getting regular self-care massages. Practical tip. Always work within your limits, even if you use proper body mechanics. Overworking yourself will only lead to the injury and burnout.